All right, everybody, Matt, Nerd Knights Painting. Uh, episode 2, Jaws of the Lion, the most requested video I've gotten. Uh, I started painting this model back in June when this game came out, and I just had I had the hardest time painting it. I didn't, didn't care for it that much. Uh, a lot of stuff going on in this model, but we're going we're gonna to go. We're going to get on it. It's a long video, but bear with me. Let's get it going. Hey, if this is your first time here, subscribe. We're doing the other two models. After this, we're going to be finishing up the Munchkin Dungeon, and then we're going to be doing Bloodborne when it comes out in December. Madara's coming up. Ether Fields. There's a ton of games that are coming out that I'm going to be doing, so hit that subscribe button. If you like painting, let's get it. Uh, we're going to be following the card on the model that was given to us in the box, obviously. So there's a lot to this model. Bear with me. Let's get it. We're going to put it on the table. We're we'll like, oh, man, that was a hard model to paint, but it looks decent. Let's do it. Let's get after it. All right. Let's go. All right, mold lines. You know the drill. Let's get rid of them. Let's get let's get rid of that ugly crap. You know what to do. I'm taking uh, Chaos Black from Citadel, and I'm going to be priming this entire miniature in black. If you got an airbrush, use your airbrush. If you got uh, Vallejo spray paint, whatever you got, just don't buy some cheap crap. It's not gonna stick, it's gonna look like garbage. So, spend a little money, get that. Uh, once you're done and that black is dried, take a little, uh, I'm using Citadel White, Corax White, and just doing a spray from above, just like that. All right, base colors, let's kick it off. Um, we're gonna be using ivory for a lot of these, so just follow what I'm doing on here. I made the clips a little bit longer, so you can kind of go back and look at them. Say, okay, this is what I need to paint, this is what I don't need to paint. There is so much crap going on with this model. They're just trying to stuff 10 pounds of crap in a two pound bag. That's why I didn't care for this model as much. Um, the quality is better than the original Gloomhaven, but there's just way too much stuff going on. And I consider myself a decent painter. I mean, I'm not pro, but decent. And I'm like, there's just too much stuff. Anyway, we're gonna be hitting the fronts, the backs, um, the top part of the shirt from this Void Warden um, with the ivory. I will say this game is fantastic. And by far the easiest introduction on how to learn a game ever in a board game. It was amazing. They did a great job. Seven four games did a great job on this. It, fantastic, Isaac Childress. That dude's dude. He's on it. He's one hundred percent on it. And whatever he makes turns to gold. So he did a great job on this game. Uh, but just follow what I'm doing and uh, take your time. Listen to some music and relax. Uh, you're gonna also see camera angles kind of change on here um, because I had painted most of the base colors back in June and then I put it down because I didn't like it then I went back so you're gonna see things a little change you're gonna see kind of an updated camera angles and whatnot compared to what, how I was painting and setting up videos back in June so just bear with me but yeah mm -hmm. all right hitting all the outer cloak parts with the little Zamsi desert um, follow what I've done from the card, um, there's a lot of spots you can hit on this. Um, you can use a smaller brush if you want. I'm using a size two brush, but it's not that big of a deal if you go smaller. Um, just pay attention to where you're hitting, and if you can, avoid hitting the ivory places because it's gonna take two or three coats um, with the ivory to go over that desert color. Also make sure you're thinning your point paints because that is the best way to paint a model. All right, we're gonna break in the action while we're sitting here watching me paint and you're following along. I'd like to thank today's sponsor, absolutely nobody, maybe one day. And if you've been following this series and watching all the videos, you know that we have no sponsors. 
but maybe one day someone will give me a dollar say hey shout out to my my business Pedroza's uh, fishing palace I doubt it but hey wishful thinking Alright, uh, we're hitting the back and the front shoulder, or the shoulder piece of the model. Uh, again, just take your time and uh, cruise around and uh, just follow what I'm doing here. For the front belt, I guess you could say, the lapel, something like that. Uh, we're using a little Dryad Bark Citadel paints. Um, we're going to be using it on that to go around the hips, and then we're going to be using it on the lapel um, that goes around the front breast portion of the model. I said breast. Um, Switch to a smaller brush if you can while doing the lapel. Uh, size 5-0, or if you want to get real crazy, 10-0. Um, but that might take you a little bit longer, but it'll save some time. Or if you feel like, hey, I'm confident. I know what's up. I know what I'm doing. Been watching Nerd Knight's painting videos for like, I don't know, a day. I know how to do this. I got it. And use a size 2-0 brush to get that lapel. Get the back two. Um, yeah. For the uh, end of staff, staff of Evandale. I don't know, I just totally made that up. We're using a little lead belcher. And if you want to hit the corners, the metal corners of the book, you can do that too. I think I got this uh, in another segment in, in this video. But you can do both at the same time. For the leg that's sticking out, ew, a little leg. Uh, we're using a little Dark Reaper. Um, just right there. I mean, you could do black, you could do whatever you want. It's your world. I just live in it. For the golden shining boots, a little retributor armor, front and back. Um, now, if you're watching this and you're like, man, I don't have all these super expensive Citadel pants because they are way overpriced. Um, use whatever you got. Use something that's like comparable. Go ahead and. Uh, freeze frame it and then put up whatever you're using to the TV, iPad, tablet, phone, and uh, just compare what you're using to what I got on there and if it's close enough, hey, psh, whatever. Sounds good. Crystal ball, a little black all around it. Thin your paints. If you want to thin it super thin to get some of that zenithal highlighting through, because it looks fantastic, you can do what I did. This is a little bit lighter on top, and I just kept it that way just to so I have to put any highlights in there. A little trick. For the face and hands, 
specifically the right hand, the one that's holding the staff, we're gonna be using a little Bugman's Glow. We're gonna be doing a mixture of some black and Bugman's Glow, I think it's black. I don't know, we'll have to wait till we get to the video, so stay tuned. Um, and hit those with some Bugman's Glow. If you look at the card, you can see that it like has a darker side of the left face, like, ooh, it's super spooky, and the right hand's like a demon hand, like the hand of uh, Vegna from D&D. So Vegna, Vecna, Vecta, there you go. Um, same difference, a little spooky-ish. But yeah, Bugman's Glow. For the old lady hair, we're gonna be using uh, Rackarth Flesh. Um, yeah, there's, yeah, that's it. I ain't got no smart ass comment like I normally do. Take your wet pellet or stone or well, whatever you got, half and half, half Bugman's Glow, half black. Hit the hand and hit the right side of the face. If you're looking at it, the right side of the face, match the card, you know what I mean. And uh, get that little darker tone. For the pages of the book, a little Mephiston Red on it. It's like a little book of like, uh, what was that movie? Don not Don of the Dead. Uh, gosh, what's his name? I don't remember. I'll think of it. A little Death Guard Green for the actual book. What the name is that book? Campbell was the star. Last name Camp Campbell? Campbell. He had chainsaw hands. Evil Dead, got it, yep, woo, I'm good. A little undercoat on the hands right there, a little uh, Bane Blade Brown, get that real quick. Like we discussed earlier, the corners of the book, a little lead belcher. If you already did this, we'll skip it, because good on you, you listen to me, and you're actually listening to what I say on this video instead of just muting me and putting Barbara Streisand on. For the sax, or the vial of something, or a little purse, I don't know. Something magical, I like it. A little Temple Guard blue, hit that up. Um, if you hear my bulldog in the background, we won't shut up. His name's Big Snacks, by the way. For the other magical bitness of whatever it is, a little uh, Thousand Suns Blue. Mm -hmm. The last of the base color, Demonte Hyde. The little pieces of purple gems or whatever they are on the belt. Hit those with some uh, purple. And that's it, that's the base colors. This was three months ago, two months ago, three months ago. Now we're fast forward until about two weeks ago when I got back around to it. All right, 50 50 mix, Nolan Oil and Lamia Medium. Um, we're going to be using this on the ivory, and we don't want it to like overpower the ivory. Even though we're not doing a whole lot with this shade, I just wanted those pieces to stick out a little bit more because we're going to cover it with ivory again. We just want to get in some of the recesses, so 50 50. God, I got, got my throat. Oh. Uh, front, back, top, just the white portions. Again, we're gonna go over with some uh, some ivory again, but hey, just 
get a little bit in those recesses. For the yellow, the book, the hair, the uh, brown, yep. uh, we're going to be using a little Agrax Earthshade for it. Um, give it a nice little liberal coating. This is why I didn't like this model. After you put the shade on, you're like, man, this looks even more terrible because of how it's the model of the design, the design of the model, there we go, that's English. Um, is I just man I did this I'm like what is going on do I suck that bad did I drink that many beers well yes to both but that's besides the point uh, instead of doing the gold boots in Agr Agrax Earth Shade and you want to do them in Reichland Flush Shade you can do that too um, it just depends on what you want to do uh, it's all you as my bulldog is chasing around pieces of dust in the sunlight through the window. What is going on here? For the middle staff of Gondolorian extravaganza, uh, Nolan Oil, and on the top of the black portion, the Sphere of Aconian, whatever you want to call it, that's what I called it. And the face hands too. The Reichland Flesh Shade. Uh, if you want to give it a little extra dosage of the Reichland Flesh Shade to give yourself a little bit more of a surface area to kind of judge between while we're doing the highlights here in the next step, go ahead and do that. Because um, the, the face is probably the best portion of this model, in my opinion. That's going to be our focal point. That's what we're going to kind of concentrate on. People say, oh, that's a sick face, and they're going to miss everything else that we messed up on. Yeah. You're using a wet palette, follow along. First color is going to be Bugman's Glow that we're going to highlight again. Switch to a smaller brush. I don't think I did in this case because I'm an idiot. And it was probably late at night. It was on my weekend. So I'm like, oh, let's just do this. Let's have fun. So switch to a smaller brush and we're going to be highlighting. Hit most of the major places. Leave some of the shade in the recesses. And let's go. Take... Uh, whatever you got your Bugman's Glow on there, and then take the same amount, so typically a brush full of Cadian Flush Tone, and mix those two bad boys together. Again, use a smaller brush if you got it, and hit the top, the bridge of the nose, the forehead, the cheekbones, um, things that the light are gonna hit on first if you're imagining the sun is directly above them That's gonna give you a good focal point of what to look at while it's uh, while we're painting the model and while somebody's staring right at it Because nobody I mean unless you're a dude you're staring at other things and you know what I'm talking about um, But you're typically looking at somebody's face going. Oh, that's so pretty or god. You're ugly Jesus So the point being if you have a good-looking face People were like, ooh, I like that, I like that. That's a good looking model, because the face is fantastic, you know what I mean? At least that's how it operates in my brain, I don't know. All right, just some straight up Cadian flesh tone again. So if this is the first time you're really painting a face, um, 
while we're doing this you want to do less and less on the surface areas you're painting each time make sure we're thinning our paints well enough because that's what's going to make it blend in a lot easier so we're thinning our paints and we're getting smaller and smaller on this painting surface areas because the next one we're going to be doing Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh and then Kislev Flesh straight up and then Kislev Flesh with uh, Pallid Witch Flesh so we got a lot to go um, but just good surface areas get those hands do not hit that left one because that's the demon one that's the hand of Vecna we don't want to do that If you're feeling froggy and you just want to go straight into Kislev Flesh, you can do that too instead of mixing the two tones. Uh, I just went straight up Kislev Flesh. And now we're hitting a smaller portion of surface area. Switch to a smaller brush. I always proud of myself for that. Tip the nose. Forehead. Hit the hands, the fingers. Um, smaller surface area on the back of the hand. Um, a little bit on the neck if you want to get a little portion that's hitting the sun. And that's it. For our last and final highlight, we're going to be uh, mixing some Kizzle of Flesh with the little Flayed Ones Flesh, and we're going to use this super sparingly, super sparingly. We'll see here in a second. Super sparingly, um, hit the top of the nose, a little bit on the forehead, top of the cheekbones, hitting the fingers only. If you want to use it just a little bit on the fingers, do that. But as you can tell, that face is really popping out now because of the different layers of colors and the smaller portion that you're doing. So it's looking pretty good for the face. People are gonna like it. It looks fantastic. You get it, you're an eight. You're eight on the hot scale. All right, we're gonna get the eyes. So the first thing we wanna do is do a back of black. And that will give us a good surface area to put the white on. Once you're happy with the amount of black, just be careful when you did that. Just don't get too much. The smaller brush, the better. We're going to do a little surface area of white. And white is going to be on top of the black. You want, you want a smaller portion of the white than the black, obviously, if that makes sense. Once you're happy with the white and the black, we're going to hit it with a little warp stone glow. A nice bright, comfortable feeling green. It makes me just want to go outside and look at the trees. Not really. Um, nice little iris. Nice little green color. So a circular little circle in the middle of that green to uh, lighten it up. Once you're happy with that green little circle you put in there, the smallest brush you got. Short of just getting the hair off the top of your head and putting paint on it and dabbing it into the eye. You're going to use a little black circle in the middle of that green. That's going to be your pupil. And it's going to look fantastic. Okay, now thin some dark gray. Um, if you are using Citadel, just use some Mechanicus and put some black in it. Darken that thing up. Thin it a lot. Get a nice thin on that paint. And we are going to paint some of that right side of that face. Darken it up. Um, this is a optional, but to me, we're trying to follow the art from the card, so we're, we're doing that. Um, and we're going to put some little squiggly lines on it to make it look like the card art. We're going to be going over the hair again, and we're going to be using a little Reichlith Flesh. Leave the uh, shaded recessed areas and the hair and put your little, uh, put some highlights. Specifically more if you're looking at the model on the left hand side because that's the brighter if you're looking at the card. You know what I mean. You're using a wet palette or a well, whatever you got. One brush full of Reichleth Flesh Shade. Reckless flesh, not shade. And 
one spoonful, spoonful, brushful of Screaming Skull. That's gonna lighten it up. We're gonna focus more, if you're looking at the model on the left-hand side, to lighten that up, which is gonna be good. Put another uh, brush full of Screaming Skull in there. So now you got two, two brushes of Screaming Skull versus one rack hard flesh. And focus more on that left side. Don't even hit that right side when you're looking at it. Then we're gonna go to Screaming Skull straight up and just add sparingly little bits of highlight onto the bangs on the left hand side of the hair only. Grab some of that Necron compound for a dry brush or lead belcher and just get your dry brush ready just like I'm doing here. Uh, do that Necron compound and just hit that staff. If you wanted to and you just wanted to use an iron breaker to go back over it, hit the raised areas, you can. I just did a dry brush on it uh, just real quick. Be careful when you're doing it next to the hands because that will screw your hands up real quick. For the crystal ball on the top, we're going to use a little art coat, a uh, GW Technical. That's it for the staff. Hit the uh, pages of the book again with a little Mephiston Red, um, just to brighten them up after we doled them down with that Agro Experts shade. To make those pages even brighter, a little Wild Rider Red. And that's the only color we're going to be doing for those pages. If you want to take it one step further and go with some, uh, I don't know, put some white in it, you can do that. But for this far in, let's not make it more complicated. For the corners of the book, a little using a little iron breaker. That's it, just be careful not to hit that red. The application of Death Guard Green um, on the book, and uh, probably just for my Bulldog. Hit the corners of the book and the raised areas on the book with a little nurgling green to make it stand out like the the Book of the Dead from Evil Dead. I don't even know if that's what it's called. Uh, that was a good movie. I really liked it. It was scary. Super scary. We're going to be lighting up all those gold areas with a little Liberator Gold. And uh, while you're here, hey, you like what you see? Hey, I don't want to miss the rest of the videos. Hey, I got, I ordered Bloodborne, or I ordered Madara, or I ordered Frosthaven, or I ordered um, Ether Fields, or whatever, Massive Darkness 2. I'm going to paint all of them. And I'm going to be getting speedier as this goes on. So hit that subscribe button. Just do it. Come on, let's get it going. Let's get this channel moving. Let's go. Support it. Let's do it. A little reapplication in Zamsi Desert. Uh, again, be careful while you're going over this. Um, it's easy to get into 
the browns and the golds. Even though I probably won't mess up the gold that much, but it definitely will get on that brown. So be careful on that. And, uh, you know. You got a second you want to take a break grab your phone pull up your little instagram and go over to nerd.nights check us out go hit that that uh follow button and get all the latest updates of everything we're doing pretty exciting uh take a little white and mix them with your ZMC Desert. We're just gonna lighten up those portions just a little bit while we're doing that. Thin your paints like they are on my wet palette. And uh, we're gonna hit that up. Smaller surface area. You can do this one or two times. Just keep lighting up each time if you want. I just did it once because I just was done mentally. All right, we're going to be doing the reapplication of ivory. Um, you can do this one two ways. You can put it back all over it like I didn't start doing. And then I realized, oh crap, this is going to be forever. And I'm already mentally done with this model. Um, and put it back all over and just keep the recessed areas with the shade in it. The thinned shade we did earlier. So that's what I ended up doing. You can go through and pick out um, portions to do, like the larger surface areas where it's got the designs out of, if you want, but I didn't do that. I just started to go back all over it again because here in the next step, we're gonna take black and we're gonna actually sit there and draw on those designs and it's gonna be a pain in the bootay. While you're painting and you gotta take a break to stretch your hand, Hey, throw me a comment down below. Tell me what you want me to paint next. Now, I am doing the rest of the Gloomhaven series, Jaws of the Lion. I have the red guy. I can't think of his name. I'm having a hard time remembering things today. He is two steps away from done being painted. It's already filmed. So we're going to be doing that one next, and then we're going to finish it up with the Demolitionist. And then we're going to do some other things. But if, leave a comment. If you have something you want me to, to paint and I have it, and I haven't painted it yet because I have a lot of unpainted games, shoot me a comment. Tell me what you want to see, and I'll see if I can make it happen. Obviously, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion was the most commented on that everybody wanted to see me finish this series. And I appreciate you guys commenting and wanting to see me paint these to be a little tutorial. So thank you for that. That means a lot. The worst part of the model, in my opinion. If you didn't want to do this, just don't. If you don't trust yourself, you think you're gonna mess it all up, just don't do it. I almost didn't do this, but I'm like, I gotta try, gotta give it a whirl, and there's some mess ups, but I gave it a shot. I gave it a shot. You can hear my bulldog story in the background. Good three point stance. Both elbows on the table, roll your shoulders in, get that model right in front of your face, 10 0 brush, and trace those lines. Follow the card art because that surprisingly does match up with the actual model. And I was very surprised in that. Uh, make sure we're doing the back. The front top portion is a like where buttons are at. So just follow what I'm doing and en embrace the suck.
and that should be about it. The pain is over. Go back over the Dark Reaper, little leg thing sticking out, the Ender Armor, whatever it is, and re go over with the Dark Reaper again. Mix a little white into that Dark Reaper and just give it a little highlight on the paint leg and that's all we're doing for that. Now when I'm looking at the card, the armor looks kind of goldish, so I'm just going to hit it up with the, the dry brush with Sigmarite, the uh, dry brush gold paint from Citadel. If you don't have this, just use your gold and do, do a normal dry brush just to hit those rates edges because I really didn't have a clue what I was going to do here and this was my best alternative. Just when you thought the pain was over, the black lines were going right back at it. Once you get that dry brush on there, we're going to black line those other things that stick up on this model on the uh, gold portions. The same thing. Q at three point. You know, both elbows, shoulders rolled forward. Get that model right in front of your face. And really get into it. Take your time. Don't try and go too fast. And just get her done. Embrace the suck. Little Baylor Brown on that front portion. A little touch up right there. Uh, makes it stick out a little bit more. Gives us some contrast. For the buttons on the front of the shirt, just put a little dab of Retributor, Retributor armor on there. Hit those little magical coin purses up with a little Temple Guard blue again. And the front one with the little south thousand suns blue. Pretty good. Pretty good. We're getting there. We're almost there. Doing a reapplication to all the original dryad bark places. Also doing a cleanup. If you want to do a reapplication of this and then do a lighter version of the dryad bark maybe add a little bit of white or some screaming skull or some ivory deck tan something to lighten it up and then do it be my guest that was done i needed to be done with this model so that's all i'm doing clean up fixing some lines i got some white in it fixing it and i am d-u-n done Oh ah, crap, there it is, last part, we're done! Paint the base black, or do something, whatever you want, doesn't matter. Oh, we're done, oh, God, thank Jesus. Well, you did it. You turned an ugly piece of gray crap 
into this beautiful piece of art. Look at you. God, I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. Look how good it looks. Well, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Yours looks great. First off, I just want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to watch this channel and uh, supporting it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. If you want to see what we got coming up next, I'm not going to stop this. I love doing this. Love this more than my job, my normal job. Please subscribe. Um, thank you so much for watching watching this video. It's it's amazing that you spend time doing it. So, uh, all right, I'll see you later and uh, paint on.